all criticism towards the regime is crushed. For years, Saudi Arabia has been criticized for its tight reign on human rights activists, jailing and torturing them. Today, though, the kingdom's hold on its citizens extends even beyond its borders. The government is trying to silence everyone, whether they are inside the country or outside the country. They like to use fears to keep everybody silent. The threats that I receive in a daily basis, in my Twitter account, in my YouTube, that's the threat in my Snapchat. Even in exile, critics of the regime remain targets, and their numbers are growing, especially here in Canada. It's the assassination of Mr. Jamal Khashoggi. I felt there is no more silence. I'm ready to speak and tell what really happens inside Saudi Arabia. It's like the kingdom of silence. Now living in the Toronto area, Raja Al Idrisi has been receiving insults and threats for years. It's people like you that incite young men and women to disobey their king. The punishment for treason is great. Raja Al Idrisi is but a stray dog in Canada. I received a phone call. Someone is telling me we will kill you. Your life just cost us like a bullet on your head. She came to Canada as a refugee nearly 20 years ago. She describes herself as a Saudi dissident who doesn't hesitate to oppose decisions made by the government she fled. I'm always full. I'm always, but I prefer to work in quiet. I don't like to be under the spot. Most of the threats come through social media. Because you are now in Canada, you think you are protected, but one day you're gonna come to the Middle East, we will catch you that mm -hmm. time. And that's what happened in 2017. Mohammed bin Salman, MBS, is the new Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, gaining greater power over the country. He presents himself as a reformer, yet dissidents like Raja continue to be targeted. On a trip to Egypt to see her dying father, the virtual threats against her take on a new, far more real form. Two guys were walking next to me, and they were telling me if I do speak about Saudi government, they will know how to deal with me. Raja believes she recognizes one of the men from Saudi intelligence. They say now, you arrived to Egypt. We could do anything before you go back to Canada. Just keep silent. Don't speak bad about the government. Months passed, and then in August of 2018, a diplomatic crisis erupts between Canada and Saudi Arabia. In a tweet, Canada called on Saudi authorities to release several recently jailed women's rights activists. And then for a tweet like this to come out in this manner, from our perspective, is outrageous. Saudi Arabia doesn't accept being told what to do by Canada. Riyadh forces the departure of the Canadian ambassador and announces the repatriation of its students here. On Twitter, Raja encourages the students to stay in Canada. I was like trying to explain the opportunities, the immigration opportunities here. Her efforts do not go unnoticed in Saudi Arabia. She says she quickly received a call from her family. They called me your second brother. He was being arrested uh, for almost a day, and he think I'm the cause of that. If Raja prefers a more discreet style of dissidence, the same cannot be said for Ghanem al Masarir, who uses cutting, provocative humor to make his point. The Saudis, uh, the Saudi royal family, they think they are above criticism. They think uh, they, uh, nobody w will uh, have the gut to uh, make fun of them. He left Saudi Arabia in 2003 and lives in London now. His videos mocking the royal family have drawn their share of threats. I have a friend visiting me from Canada and uh, we went for a cafe. 
That friend is Alan Bender, a businessman specialized in negotiations for North American companies seeking to do business in the Middle East. Last August, he was in London with Ghanem when two Saudis went after him. I think we just walked for about under a minute or two. And that's when they started shouting at him, yelling. They attacked me uh, verbally and physically, saying that, uh, uh, who am I to talk about the Saudi royal family? They tried to attack him several times, but I, I, I stopped them, but one of them uh, managed to slip from behind me and punched uh, uh, Ghanem. Ghanem is convinced this attack was orchestrated by Saudi authorities. It's, it's a message to uh, any dissident that we can reach you, even if you are ab uh, abroad, even if you are in the UK. Police opened an investigation into the incident. So far, no arrest has been made. The government sent two representatives and one of my brothers, and they sent him to Montreal to make uh, or to arrange a meeting with me. Closer to home, in Quebec, Omar Abdulaziz has also found himself caught in the tentacles of the Saudi regime. He spoke with our colleagues at CBC. They were trying to convince me to go back. We want uh, to change the system. We want to do things for the youth, for young people. I said thank you for that, but I cannot go back. After his refusal, he says, his friends and two brothers back home were arrested. I didn't think that they're going to harm uh, a family member, uh, friends, uh, innocent people had nothing to do with politics. The grip around Omar continues to tighten. He learns his phone is infected with software, allowing someone to spy on all of his communications. I would say for sure this of the government behind it. And you know what, what really you know, makes me sad, because now I don't know how many people are in danger. One of those people, Jamal Khashoggi. With Omar, the two exchanged on various projects, including one to supply SIM cards to collaborators, allowing them to use social media untraced by Saudi authorities. The goal was to counter what some call the flies, pro-regime accounts that inundate dissidents every day with insults on Twitter or other social media networks. Last December, Omar shared some of those exchanged with Khashoggi with CNN, like this one, where the journalist describes the Crown Prince as a beast in search of victims, messages that could have been intercepted in Riyadh. The hacking of my phone played uh, a major role uh, on what happened to Jamal. I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry to say that. Ghanem al Masarir's phone was also targeted by spyware as was the phone of another well-known dissident living in London. I thought it's safe because it's for the Ministry for Justice. Then I opened it from my uh, mobile. Yahya Asiri left Saudi Arabia in 2013. He has since founded an organization defending human rights. Through his contacts, he hopes to sensitize other governments to the problems in Saudi Arabia. When I published these pictures, there is lots, lots of people, they are, uh, keep saying about me, he's a traitor, he's working for our enemy, and we don't need any mercy with, for the traitor, we must kill all traitors. Assassinations, spyware, jailing family members, insults and death threats, despite it all, for these dissidents, the fight must continue. Someone has to say no, someone has to stop against this. And the real reform must start with the uh, free all prisoners of conscience, allow people to have them uh, the freedom of speech. As a special rapporteur to the UN, Michel Forst is in regular contact with many human rights defenders. He feels even if many dissidents are determined to forge ahead, others have been shaken by the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. I've met many dissidents who, since this happened, have told me they are more scared than before. They check behind them on the street to see if they are being followed and sometimes travel under different identities to avoid being followed. It's more difficult right now to get information from inside because the cyber attack and people they are uh, worried about if the government is spying on them. Also after the mass arrest and the crackdown against the human rights defenders, 
This is uh, really make our mission more difficult. In 2017, Saudi Arabia and its crown prince are projecting a new image, more modern and open to the world. Oil prices have dropped and the kingdom wants to diversify its economy. Women will have the right to drive and cinemas will start to open. We sensed that Saudi Arabia wanted to show it was making progress, that the country's new leader was progressive. Saudi Arabia wanted to be a normal, uh, moderate country. Dennis Horak was the Canadian ambassador to Saudi Arabia from 2015 to 2018, persona non grata there since the famous Canadian tweet last August. The reality is that the reform program that, that the Crown Prince has put in, Vision 2030, it covers a vast area of activity, everything from reforming the education system to economic diversification, opening up entertainment space, as you said. But what it isn't, and never was, was about opening political space. To put it crudely, it's, uh, you know, shut up and go to the movies. This man sought to do nothing more than that. Not even remotely a dissident, he led a quiet life in Saudi Arabia. But even for someone like him, a small mistake can be very costly. To protect his friends and family still back home, we will call him Saeed. We have also altered small details of his story to avoid recognition. The intelligentsia, yeah, they came to me. We know what you did and we know when and where you talk. Saeed is from the Shia minority in Saudi Arabia. I'm one of those thousands of people who spoke, but my fault was that I spoke in the wrong place. According to him, his trouble started when he criticized the regime while talking to colleagues at work. One of them reported what Said had said to the authorities. I thought that the period we spent together as colleagues will make him at least be silent, or forgive me, at least, but he didn't. Said was denouncing the government's repression of the Shia community, as well as its armed intervention in Yemen. What happened in Yemen was really a disaster. Saudi Arabia has been widely criticized for its role in the Yemeni war, one of the worst human rights crises in the world today. When I lost my job, the reason was that I talked. Shortly afterwards, a Saudi intelligence agent contacts Said with a message. He told me, you know, the traitors in any place of the world have one punishment. So I knew that he meant that I might be killed. You need to cooperate with us so we can forgive you. They want me to spy on some of the people. Since Mohammed bin Salman took power and promised reforms, a modernization of the state in effect, what we have seen at Amnesty International is more the renewal of the crackdown on dissidents. Even religious leaders critical of the regime can be arrested. But last year, it was the imprisonment of several human rights activists that captured the headlines. Amongst them, Lujain al Hatloul, a graduate of the University of British Columbia. Samar was the first woman to sue her guardian. And Samar Badawi, who was at the center of Canada's controversial tweet to Saudi Arabia. We don't have any specific information about their well-being. Obviously, we're very concerned because there have been allegations of ill-treatment in Saudi prisons. This is not about rights. This is about national security. Dennis Horak knew some of the women arrested. He has trouble understanding what threat they could have posed to national security. I find it hard to believe, to be perfectly honest, from, from what I know of them. Their agenda was change in Saudi Arabia, but change along the lines that had already started in terms of women's rights, in terms of uh, altering the, the guardianship laws, which have to do with various controls that men have over women in Saudi Arabia. In 2014, a sweeping law on anti-terrorism was passed. In it, just about all forms of dissidence and opposition to the state fall under the banner of terrorism. One of the first victims of this law was lawyer Walid Abu al Kair, Samar Badawi's ex husband. He also represented one of the most recognized prisoners of conscience, Samar Badawi's brother, Raif Badawi, imprisoned since 2012. 
Raif calls once or twice a week, depending on his morale. Ansaf Haidar, Raif's wife, has lived in Sherbrooke with their three children since 2013. Raif, he wrote for human rights and the rights of women, for freedom of conscience. For his writings, Raif was sentenced to 1,000 lashes, 10 years in prison, and an additional 10 years without leaving the country. Like many others, Ansaf had seen many promising signs recently. Since 2017, there have been a lot of changes in Saudi Arabia. Like women now have the right to drive, and there are cinemas in Saudi Arabia. The religious police have less power than before. But there have been incidents that have happened, like the problems with Canada, the death of the journalist Jamal Khashoggi. So we don't know what will happen after that. Despite her concerns, she is hopeful her husband will be released. She was encouraged by a recent meeting with Prime Minister Justin Trudeau in Sherbrooke. He promised me he would do something as soon as possible. It's the case, the case that is most famous. Arresting someone symbolic like that is a way of sending a message to others. We've gone after him, so be sure that if you continue your activities, there will be a price to pay. While the famous cases make the headlines, other Saudis caught in the clutches of the regime live their drama in complete anonymity. They didn't kill me because in that time they need somebody from my town to cooperate with them. Because of my fault, they needed also my wife to cooperate with them. Said and his wife would have to spy on members of their community. I knew that when I spy, I will harm these people. These people will be in danger. These people will be arrested or tortured or killed. So me and my wife, we had difficult choice either to stay and cooperate or escape. We decided to escape. It was hard to choose that, but it will be harder to stay and cooperate because it's like putting blood in your hand to be part of this government. Said and his family flee Saudi Arabia, something he never imagined doing. No, no, not even for a second. I'm not okay on some issues, but this is your country. You want to stay with your parents, with your friends, society that you were raised in. When I see these people who escape, I can't imagine their feeling, but now I am in their place. Je m'appelle uh, Salwa. Uh, J'ai uh, 24 ans. I decided to leave Saudi Arabia because there is no law to protect a woman there. Last April, Salwa al-Zarani and her younger sister fled Saudi Arabia in the middle of the night. They want to appear that a woman uh, live a good life and uh, they have their rights, they can uh, drive, they can uh, get a job, but actually, no, that only for the few, few women. To escape, she had to steal her own passport from her brother's home and secretly book airline tickets. Simple mistake may lead to end my life. Fleeing her family without anyone knowing is also what Rahaf Mohammed did in January. I'm not leaving my room until I see UNHCR. Uh, I want uh, asylum. Pulled up inside a hotel in Thailand, the young 18-year-old broadcast her message around the world within days with the help of Twitter. In the Nations Unies, we uh, have asked to offer the status of asylum to Mademoiselle Al-Kunun, what we had offered. In an interview with the CBC, she recounts having been the victim of violence at the hands of her family. I had to risk my life in order to get my freedom. But my greatest fear was if they find me, I would disappear. If I, if someone take me back, I will be jailed for six months and uh, with 18, uh, with 80 lashes. 
the number of Saudis fleeing their country is growing, as is the number of asylum requests in Canada. The number has been growing almost steadily for the past 10 years, reaching 362 in 2017. In September 2018, more than 400 requests were still before the Immigration and Refugee Board of Canada. According to the UN, Canada ranks second for the number of asylum seekers from Saudi Arabia, just behind the United States. It's like a reputation for Canada. They have the humanity side. Saeed is now a refugee here in Quebec. The recent increase in requests doesn't surprise him. They are increasing because the arrival of MBS makes the country living there more difficult than before. Salwa is also now in Canada. She hopes to obtain refugee status. A status Rahaf already has. She plans to continue her fight for women, but from here in Canada. In Saudi Arabia, I would not be able to do anything. Definitely there were women before me who tried to change things, but they are now in prison and they are being exposed to torture and I don't want to be like them. We can't deny there is a problem. The community is watching NGOs publish reports, but they refuse to recognize publicly there is a problem. Since Canada asked Saudi Arabia to free its human rights activists, diplomatic tensions remain. Talks continue between the two countries, but there is still no Canadian ambassador in place in Riyadh. As for the Saudi students, some were allowed to finish their studies in Canada. We contacted Saudi Arabia's foreign affairs for comment, but our requests went unanswered. The murder of a journalist, Khashoggi, has been absolutely unacceptable, and we still demand the best response from Arabia Saudi. Canada is among the countries calling for a thorough investigation into the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. Leader who is also controlling that uh, Monsieur Sal uh, le Prince Salman uh, is perdu control of his guard, rapproché comme ça, ça me paraît très très invraisemblable. Ottawa is also examining its export permits for the Canadian light armored vehicles to Saudi Arabia, a contract worth 15 billion dollars. What happened with Canada, then what happened to Jamal, revealed everything. The guy who wants to show as the man who will reform the system of Saudi Arabia is exposed to the reality. Nobody can say Mohammed bin Salman is a reformer. The black days are coming for him. I don't think that he's going to be a king. But not everyone is convinced. Well, he's not going anywhere. Uh, the Saudis won't let the world dictate who rules their country. No matter what the future holds for MBS, his critics will continue to make themselves heard. I'm not scared and I will continue doing what I'm doing. Uh, it's only I have to be more cautious. I wouldn't be surprised if some of the dissents would uh, be a little quieter. Some might just react completely the opposite. And it's sort of the law of unintended consequences, as, as if you will, you know, by shutting, trying to shut up one man that they have unleashed uh, dozens. I believe the Saudi regime should fear more than uh, before right now. I believe uh, this is our time right now. Yes, it is. For sure, the Saudi regime should fear more. Should have like more fear than us. We are strong now. <laughs>